Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden. And in this video, we're going to be looking at an ancient practice that dates back to the Neolithic times, and that is of course coppicing. Now up until the 19th century, coppicing was actually the most practiced form of woodland management. Now that's great because it means that by coppicing these trees and small shrubs, and that is the, the practice of cutting these trees and shrubs down to what's known as a stool, where they will of course regrow the following spring, and send up multiple shoots and this is done on a rotation every sort of five to thirty years depending on the desired size of timber you're looking to harvest and by doing that it means that it leaves our bigger deciduous trees trees such as oak which don't take to coppicing very well of course they're left to grow so it means that they are in their own right creating wonderful deciduous habitat and being left by man whilst we are concentrating on coppice management now that's of course great for the wildlife and obviously unfortunately Methods have changed in the last two to three hundred years, the intensification of agriculture, but most importantly forestry, has meant that a lot of production timber now is planted in blocks and felled in blocks, which of course is not very sustainable. So coppicing really has died out as a practice, which is such a shame because it has so many benefits for wildlife. So one of the things I like to do, apologies for a few noisy jackdaws, uh, one of the things I like to do when I'm traveling the country and of course creating these wildlife gardens is planting coppice belts. They are easy to manage, great for the wildlife and look fantastic too. And as you can see to my right, this one here is about coming up for its first coppice, shall we say. And what I do is I manage the coppice belts on a three year rotation. So a third of the, uh, of the shrubs and the trees that I want to coppice get cut in the first year. Uh, then a third the second year and a third the following year. So they are always on a rotation. So there's always successional regrowth. It's never just completely cut and obviously devoid of life. So it's a fantastic way of creating a wonderful habitat within your garden and by managing these trees so that they get to three years old before they are then coppiced, it means that they have a great potential for flowering and fruiting of course, which so many of our hedgerows in the wider countryside don't get a chance to do because they're flailed back year after year, sometimes two or three times a year, which is just heartbreaking to see. It knocks off all the berries for the autumn visitors, things such as field fares, red wings and all our thrush species. Uh, so it's really such a shame to see this practice but by putting these in a garden you don't have to trim them on a regular basis like a hedgerow if you've got a little bit of room and you can let them bush out to their full potential I promise you they'll look a sight and the rewards for wildlife will be absolutely fantastic so the species that have got in this belt are things such as gelderose, hazel, silver birch, alder, rowan, crabapple, goat willow, holly and they're all trees that can be cut down to the ground year after year if you want them to and they are fantastic at springing back and bouncing back with a lot of new fresh growth the following season. Now this fresh growth is great because not only does it produce a lot of vigorous vigorous vegetation should I say it that which in turn provides a lot of food for caterpillars so for example goat willow uh, when we look at that as a species and uh, the recent video I've done on that if you haven't seen it do check that out for uh, its potential for bees at this time of year early in the year really fantastic shrub that is uh, but by using things like goat willow and coppicing them down that new growth is so fresh is really appealing to a lot of moth species which will lay their eggs on the leaves and of course that produces a lot of food for the caterpillars to then eat. So and also by doing this coppice management you're creating nice dense uh, blocks of vegetation as shrubs and trees get older of course after the coppice management if it's not com completely coppiced every three to five years they can get quite leggy and quite sparse which means it's less nesting potential for birds. So by coppicing on a regular basis, as I say, three year rotation with this one, it means that you're able to see a lot of new vegetation, which is nice and dense, and obviously makes a brilliant habitat for bird nesting potential. So I'm gonna get on and crack on with the coppice in this belt now, and I'm gonna put... Okay, well, that's a small trail of destruction behind me that I'll clear up in a minute. But before I lose the light, I just wanted to show you a few elements that can be found within the scrub belt or the coppice belt should I say so let's delve deep and I'll show you the importance of this stuff so as you can see this stuff here is obviously catkins of the hazel and this is a lovely specimen here so I say this this uh, coppice belt was planted four years ago now so it really is maturing nicely I mean that is yeah a good seven eight feet now and they weren't very big when they went in 
holly these are doing all right now these are reasonable sized specimens uh, we've got some field maple over the back there which is uh, a great shrub and obviously has a lovely bright yellow it's one of the first shrubs to uh, change color or trees to change color in the autumn months in september here on the front of the belt we've got a crab apple which is again a really good one green hair streak butterflies uh, use this as a nectar source in the spring but also a lot of bees uh, and the berries of the fruit sorry of course are obviously used by birds eaten by birds in the autumn uh, we've got this thing doing its very best to have a go at me this is of course a dog rose which you can see down here and these things I've done previous videos on the dog rose uh, which you can have a look at of course on the channel uh, and the benefits of the flowers and the berries for wildlife so yeah this thing growing nicely which will create some nice dense cover and protection for birds lower down in the summer months so when this gets a bit bigger things like uh, black cap of course chiff chaff that like to nest low down uh, almost at ground level a lot of the time in brambles what else have we got we've got these cracking rowan trees well, possibly my favorite tree i don't know oaks are pretty hard to beat uh, but anyway rowan a really really good one for wildlife flowers are fantastic in may time uh, and then of course the berries are almost second to none small tree for a garden if you're looking for one that's your kitty uh, what else have we got we've got spindle which is a really beautiful shrub has these lovely pink and orange flowers and fruits um, when it has uh, when it has those on later on in the year the stems when it gets older go a lovely green color absolutely love that about them uh, we've got a lovely cracking older look at the size of that towering above the wall now uh, this older it's really really doing well and again catkins on that for bees at this time of year middle of march now so that looking really good we've also got some good old hawthorn don't think i've covered hawthorn yet <laughs> uh, quintessential english hedgerow plant of course great if let to uh, flower really good for a lot of insects and of course the berries obviously which we've already spoken about which sadly gets smashed off a lot of the time at the back end of autumn by tractors and flail mowers birch tree again look at that must be what 15 foot plus now doing really well another older tree there towering above the wall and again these are great for for the tit species birch older absolutely loved by tits because they're full of insects so long-tailed tits you know uh, great tits blue tits uh, coal tits as well will obviously come through and feed on these uh, dogwood another one we haven't touched on yet which is very good at spreading and creating dense cover again and have these lovely red stems a lot of the sort of garden varieties of this stuff you see in garden centers but the standard cornus um, sanguinea which is the uh, the native dogwood are absolutely fantastic bit of dead on the end of that but uh, that won't hurt it it'll soon come back they, they'll that'll uh, get a coppice in next year um, what else do we have in the belt for you today? I think we've almost covered most of them. Crab apple. Ah, oh, gelder rose, another one. Uh, again, lovely for the autumn berry gelder rose. Absolutely, they're almost like little red currants. Loved by a lot of birds, bush species in particular. More field maple at the back, hawthorn, rowan, dogwood. Just repeating myself now. So you get the idea, look this goat willow about to come into flower and as I say for those of you that have just seen the goat willow video you will know the importance of these for bees at this time of year. Of course a couple of well weeks behind probably here up in Cheshire compared to where I did the video for goat willow down in uh, Hertfordshire so uh, yeah a good distance apart they are so again that climatic difference can mean uh, a two week, three, four week delay depending on where you are in the country as to what time of year things will flower i just will show you these catkins of these older trees which are absolutely beautiful at the moment also a purpley color and if you can see that trying to get to focus yeah they are fantastic beautiful tree that look at that tits will absolutely love going through there and of course over the wall we've got some really nice trees as well nice birch uh some what look like sycamore trees ash trees yeah really good round here so much habitat for birds and as you can see over this side of the wall lots of big oak trees as well uh, and one of my favorite trees that i would long one day love to get to america to see these cracking redwoods sun setting behind me there look at that beautiful 
So yes, hopefully that's given you a bit more of an indication as to the purpose of a coppice belt. And what I would say is one butterfly in particular that ma massively benefits from coppice management in a wood, fortunately for me, a few miles from a house uh, is the heath fertillary, which actually um, lays its eggs on an annual plant called cow wheat, which only grows once areas are coppiced in a woodland. So heath fertilaries were kind of known as the woodman's friend almost. They sort of followed them round year after year. So where there was a coppice rotation, they would then move into that clearing the next year. So yeah, fantastic lifestyle, life cycle these heath fertilaries have. So not only that, a lot of butterflies as well, but things like nightingales. I mean, how many of us have seen nightingales in the last few years? I've only heard a handful in the last five years. So yeah, they are really declining and they thrive in this stuff. You know, when it's small to medium height scrub, uh, particularly when it's dense, a bit denser than this, uh, and in, in a quiet setting in a woodland, um, in Bramble in particular, but dense scrub regenerating vegetation, absolutely perfect for warbler species. As I say, black cap, chiff chaff, uh, white throat, yellow hammer, anything like that uh, in the countryside and of course like I say the nightingales which we don't see very often these days sadly. So coppice belts, I cannot recommend anything better for your garden for attracting birds, insects, um, you name it, hedgehogs to rummage through the bottoms of of course. They really are an amazing resource for so much wildlife. So please consider getting some in your garden if you're not sure what to do or how about going or how how to go about planting one of these please get in touch i'll be happy to help drop some comments in the comments below thanks for watching feel free to subscribe to the channel if you've enjoyed the video and give the channel uh, or the video a like and i'll be sure to bring you many more videos on all the projects that i'm doing around the uk in videos to come thanks for watching guys i'm going to get on and clear this small devastation this destruction path behind me <laughs> and uh, by the way this isn't going to waste either this is going to create some dead, head, dead hedges uh, which are an absolutely fantastic resource for wildlife as well don't get rid of all your brash don't chop it all up make a pile of it I promise you you get blackbirds wrens dunnocks nesting in it yeah everything has a, a use in nature so that's going to go in some stacks at the bottom of the garden for birds to hopefully nest in in the not too distant future thanks for watching guys I'll see you on the next video Thank you.